Hey everyone, how are you doing? Are we feeling awake? I know I'm I'm a bit a bit tired, uh, and I'm a little bit nervous because this is one of this is the first diversity quote unquote talk I've ever given, and it will also be my last because when we give diversity talks, we need to be sure that we give everyone a voice, and so this is my one shot at it. And so to start, I'd like this quote from his keynote at GopherCon 2015. Russ Cox says, "To make Go successful." We need everyone's help, and everyone isn't here. And today, I want to apply this to Node. And what I'm saying is that to make Node successful, we need everyone's help, and everyone isn't here. I'd like you to take a moment and just look around the room and take note of the people who are attending today. So. Hi, my name is Ashley Williams. You may know me as AG Dubs from the internet. And I work at this lovely company called MPM that you may have heard of before. But I'm actually here speaking a bit more on behalf of the fact that I'm the individual membership director on the Node Foundation Board of Directors. And if you don't know what that is, that's actually a director role on the board that was elected from the community members of the Node Foundation to give a voice to the people in the community on the board. Now, perhaps because of those things that I am, I'm also extremely tired. <laughs> and so this is going to be a talk about how tired I am and why and how I think we can fix some of these issues. But a month ago, I tweeted this, and a lot of people got pretty upset. I said, I am tired of and angry with Node.js leadership. Inclusive spaces are within your reach, and at this point, it is clear that you don't want them. So now, I think we've all realized that this talk is about to get real. And so this is a very serious statement. And what I'd like to do is kind of unpack what led up to me saying this and what I think we can do to move forward so that we can have the better node, the node that is successful when we have everyone's help. So turn back time to Node Interactive US in December of 2015. I was giving a keynote on all of the fantastic numbers we have at NPM that morning. And I was sitting up at the front of the room, and I was met by some of my friends. This is a tweet from one of my friends. Her name is Rachel. These were some of the four women that I could find in the room at the moment. And it was so uncomfortable. The, the Node Interactive was much larger than this one. I'm going to say it was around 2,000 people. And we literally saw a tweet from someone who had taken a picture behind us and said, oh, I love the Node community. It is so diverse. And yet, and yet we were sitting there completely upset, realizing that we were some of the only women we could find in the room. And this is where it started, because later on, my friend Mariko, who is also a speaker, was in a session where she heard someone say, a presenter, people who identify as marginalized in society feel comfortable in this community, and it's awesome. And so Mariko asks, misunderstanding? Because clearly we had already stated how uncomfortable we were about the lack of representation that we had in both the audience and the speakers. And so the diversity thread was something that we felt very heavily throughout the entire event to the very end when there was a panel of the TSC. And then I finally just got up the courage to ask them their plan for diversity. Now, why, why would this take so much courage? Why would this be difficult for me? And it's because the panel looked like this. Now, there are lovely people on this panel, but you can see here I'm making a joke. And this joke points out what is uncomfortable. Here, they are nearly sorted perfectly by facial hair. But of course, that does indicate that they were all people who could have facial hair. And so with this, the TSC did respond, hey, you know what? We know diversity is a problem. We care about this problem, and we want to fix it, but we don't know how. And for, as far as answers go, that's a pretty good answer. And so. Fast forward to January 14th, 2016, when something called the Inclusivity Working Group was ratified by the TSC. The Inclusivity Working Group was a working group that was designed specifically to try and get people with core competencies in making diverse and safe spaces to bring their expertise into the Node community to help improve that. Now, 
It sounds like this is a success story. We found a problem, and then there was a solution, right? But it turns out that if we look today at the Inclusivity Working Group's activity on its repo, you'll see this was taken a couple of days ago, that the most latest activity was only a month ago. And what was that activity? That activity was people rapidly leaving this group. And it was at the beginning of last month that something that I worked so hard to get ratified, I also left. And I think that's an important thing to say. We know that tech has a diversity problem. But what we need to realize is this is not exclusive, all right? It's not just a general tech problem. Node has a diversity problem. If literally people did not feel included in the inclusivity working group, how can we help and hope that they would feel in the greater Node ecosystem? But this is not all doom and gloom. I am here to say that I believe another Node is possible. And the reason I know that another Node is possible is because I've seen it. I've seen it in London. I've seen it in LA. I've seen it in Bangalore, India. I've seen it in Paris, France. And I've seen it in Boston, Massachusetts. These are all shots that show an extremely diverse and very enthusiastic community of people who got together to learn Node. And these are some of the most diverse tech photos that I've ever seen and many other people have ever seen. And so these all came from an initiative that I announced on February 11th of this year, all right, which is called Node Together. And so I announced this on February 11th, and I said, we will be traveling the world sharing an inclusive and extra awesome beginner experiences for new members of the Node.js community. All right, and this is partially because my core competency is a teacher. I have been teaching people for nearly my entire life. This is a decade ago, my very first web development class with my students here. And you can see that they are three extremely awesome ladies uh, who are better at dancing than I am. All right. But the goal of Node Together is an inclusive education space. Now, often people are confused about the differences between the words inclusion and the words diversity. And so the goal here with inclusion is to make a space that maybe not necessarily has everyone represented, but is possible for anyone who is underrepresented to feel comfortable and safe in. You need to create a safe and inclusive space first so that people will want to come and enjoy your space and participate in it. And so one of the goals of Node Together is to create that inclusive space. And so what we like to say is we want to teach you Node. Yes, you. Too often, people believe that lots of things in programming are completely outside of their grasp. And so the very first thing that we say is to affirm the fact that literally everybody can and kind of should learn Node. Why not? It's one of the fastest growing ecosystems, as Michael said. And we have lots and lots of opportunities for people to be diving into different areas of programming just with this one runtime, which is extremely awesome. And so Node Together looks a lot like this. This is a shot from us in London. Uh, basically, we work together to build an application, starting with basics like the command line uh, and then also Git. But then we go through and we build out an express application using several NPM packages. And this is what it looks like. So we have been to three continents, five countries, six events, and we have taught 174 students how to build an app in Node. All right, and I'd like to share just a couple of their experiences with you because I think that they speak much better than I could possibly ever. So here is Tara, she was part of our London group. She said, got my Node on at Node Together London and deployed my first Node app using Heroku. Here's Lauren who said, she learned how to build an app which she swore was on her when hell freezes over list. <laughs> All right. Here's another one. This one I think is fantastic. Marina is sharing that she enjoyed learning about Node. And then some dude comes in on Twitter and is like, oh, and then you had to like throw tables because it was super hard, right? And she's like, actually, no. It was super great, and I had an awesome time. So again, we can teach Node without this kind of struggle that sometimes people believe is part of the programming education experience. All right, and so this is the amazing app that we build. It's a single, just a one-page app rendered on the server, which basically shows a random cat in space, 
And it also gives you a random motivational message, which is a package called Motivations on NPM. If you'd like to encourage beginners, these are shown to all of them. Uh, you just add a single line to that uh, package, and uh, they show them up. So here it says, all the cats in the land bow down to your cool computer skills. All right. And so this is Kristen. And what's really neat about this app is that it's very extensible. So after teaching this, she was like, why should I just use some static cat pictures? I'm going to hook my app up to the cat API, which exists. I had no idea. Um, and so this is her version of the app, which includes a lot of GIFs of flashing cats and things like this. Um, but what's awesome about this is that part of the reason that we build an app is that then the students are able to have something that they can share out into the world. This is not an academic exercise. I do love Node School, and I absolutely love the skills that they teach. But one of the goals of Node Together is to make sure that you make something that feels real that you can share out. And you do it from the beginning to the end from scratch. So in addition, this isn't just amazing for the students, but we're also doing Node Together to help out the mentors. Here's a student named Sam who finally got the HTML templating working in his app. And he tweeted to his mentor, Ellie, who then replied, the sky's the limit. So proud of my star student. And this is creating relationships in the community that would be highly unlikely if we weren't creating a space for both of those people to come together and meet. And so here we have Yvonne, who taught in LA, who said he would absolutely mentor again. And then the other cool thing is that mentors are also taking these events, and they are extending them. So as we travel around following the Node Live events, uh, as follow-up, mentors would start up new events to kind of follow up and teach more and more Node. So here's a, a mentor uh, woman who then created a Node version of uh, their exercise for women who code LA. Um, to help follow up on the Node Together thing. So instead of showing motivational statements, they actually hooked it up to the GitHub API. All right. And so what's also neat about this is it's creating communities between mentors and students, students and each other. And then it's also students across the world. So here's a student named Dalajinder, uh, who is from Paris, who shouted out to all of her friends in the UK to go attend this event. Now, as an aside, I need to say Dalajinder is someone who is particularly uh, uh, precious to me in this situation is because when we talk about everyone being here, there's a lot of different aspects of diversity. Dalajinder is a student who has type 1 diabetes, which I also had, and it's so rare for me to meet people in the tech community who have it, so that was a really important thing for me. And now here is a, a mentor who actually wrote a, a blog post about his experience being a mentor, and he said, Node Together is a human experience, and he said that it gave him hope for the future of programming which is a little bit kumbaya, but at the same time, I think it's very important. And when he follows up, the thing that I like most about it is that he says, I hope they will carry on learning Node.js, and I hope to come across pull requests from them on these diverse projects on GitHub. The goal being that this is really just the foot in the door, but it's enough to get people motivated and started in the Node community. So the question here is, OK, You've said that there's big problems. Now you say you have this like, really good feels thing. How, how do we get this to happen? How do we get this to happen for Node? How does this work? And so I like to think that it has a lot to do with how you think about the problem. So I like to think about thinking a lot. And this is a woman named Katrina Owen, who I used to be on the core team of the Sinatra framework in Ruby with. Uh, and she recently gave a talk. And she said, in order to learn something, you have to start. And unless you have some really powerful habits in place, you have to keep convincing yourself not to stop. And I think this is one of the biggest problems that we have in Node, is that there are a lot of amazing people in Node. However, because of the environment, we find that a lot of people struggle to convince themselves not to stop. So she talks about how we are able to, like, this framework for thinking about motivation. And it has three elements. The first element is subjective value, which means that you have to believe that the goal that you're working towards is worth it. And I think in Node.js, as Michael has already said, we've done an amazing job of that. Node can do so many things, and it's lowered the barrier of entry. And it makes us able to write desktop apps. We can write mobile apps. We can write all sorts of things. And so I think, fundamentally, Node has solved the subjective value problem. We do believe learning Node is worth it. 
The next step in the motivation framework is that you have to have an expectation of success, which means that you need to actually believe that you can succeed. You need to believe that Node.js is something that you can actually learn. Now, lucky for us, we have things like Node School and programs that do actually do a lot of work to help it be possible for us to learn. People write a lot of blog posts. There are a lot of references out there. But I do think that we can do better in making these things a lot easier so that people can believe that they can actually succeed in this. So as far as subjective value, I think we're doing really awesomely. Expectations of success, I think we're getting there. And a lot of things like the documentation working group and additionally the internationalization working group, which is taking the materials we have and making them accessible to a lot of more people, are really moving us forward in there. And then there's this last one, which is environment, which is a supportive environment is more motivating than a hostile one. And here, I think, is where we can improve. But let's think about this framework, all right? So if you believe something has value, but you have no expectation of success, you're going to be despondent, all right? It's something you really want, but you don't think that you can get there. Now, if you think something is achievable, but it doesn't have any value, you're going to be apathetic, all right? Why, why would you? You could do it, but there's really no reason. But now, assuming, all right, that something is valuable and possible, but the environment is hostile, you're going to have to spend an extreme amount of effort just trying not to quit. And this is where I think we are with many people who are trying to enter Node, is the goal that we need to focus on is lowering that effort in them just not quitting. So how do we do this? This is the major success, I believe, in Node Together. One of the amazing things about Node Together is that we do all of that work from not knowing any command line or Git to a full app in five, five very long hours. Very long hours that are often done after work. So somewhere between uh, 5 and 10 PM is when we run this. And inevitably, by the end of the night, I'm convinced that people are trying to run out the door and every time, I'm kicking them out at 11.30 because they're going to make us leave the, leave the uh, space. In fact, last night, we ran a node together, and we were told that we were going to get locked in, and so we had to leave. So what's happened in node together is despite the fact that the environment, at least physically, was very warm and it was very tiring, people didn't want to quit. And here are the things that I think I've done and I think the Node Together community has done to make that possible. The first one is be actively kind. Yes, this event has a code of conduct. Lots of events have codes of conduct. But their codes of conduct say, don't be a jerk. And I think that's an extremely low bar. Like, if I'm going to spend a day with people, if the bar of that behavior is that you're not going to be super mean to me, that's not really where I want to be. I want to be in an environment where people actively care about each other, where the goal is to make other people feel good. Because what we're doing should feel good. It shouldn't just be us trying to avoid each other so that we're not mean. That's just an extremely low bar. The next one is be prepared to learn. And I don't mean be prepared to learn Node. Node is the easy part of being in the Node community. The hard part is that there are a lot of people who aren't like us who have a lot of things to say. And so inevitably, we are going to be wrong. And someone is going to correct us. And the key here is that when that happens is not to be defensive, but to actually actively welcome it and be ready to take those lessons on and learn from them. I think this one's also extremely important. And this is something that I would particularly like to see implemented in this community. It's also the hardest. And that is to place the burden of work on those with the most ability to shoulder it. Which is to say, if there are people who are underrepresented in your community, do not put all of the effort on them to fight for themselves. Because simply by effect of being an underrepresented person, they have significantly less of the ability to shoulder it. In order for our communities to be better, safer, inclusive spaces for people who are underrepresented, we need to take that burden on.
That is our responsibility. And to put it on the people who have the least power in a community is unfair, and I'm going to go as far as to say that it's cruel. Lastly, the real key thing, if you can do anything at all, is to listen to people who aren't like you and believe what they say. And that might sound simple, but inevitably, every time somebody is sharing an opinion that might be un unwelcome or seems new or seems critical, too easy is it for us to say, well, no, that's just invalid. And that is when we shut down the entire conversation. So these things happen because doing all of this is really scary. It's kind of an unknown, and inevitably, based on what it is, we are dealing things with what we don't know. And it's super scary, like really scary. And when I tweet this, which I do kind of genuinely believe, I'm scared. Because tweeting things like this have gotten my job at NPM threatened. People have tried to get me fired. People have tried to remove my ability to act in the community because this is a scary opinion for people. And I want to call on the community, all right, to say, we are stronger as a node together. We need these critical opinions. And as much of a downer as this may be at 9.30 in the morning to hear that we have a lot of work to do, I know that programmers love challenges. And it turns out that this social problem is actually a systems problem. And programmers love systems challenges. And this is exactly what this is. All right? And so to return, to make Node.js successful, we need everyone's help. And everyone isn't here. We need your help. We need you to speak up on this. And we need you to advocate for the people you want to see in this community. Thank you very much.